Hey, are you devastated by the fact that you don't own land, but you do want to decorate a very cute apartment? Then this is the episode for you. Oh, hey, I'm Katie. This is Laugh Cry DIY, and I am a color-loving maximalist DIYer and renter who understands the struggle of small budgets, small spaces, and landlords that won't let you do anything fun. But I firmly believe that that does not stop you from having a cute apartment. So today I wanted to give you an epic roundup of 10 ideas slash hacks slash tips to sass up your apartment in ways you might not have thought of that are like far beyond just a gallery wall. And because I want to be realistic and I myself have been known to push the boundaries of what is considered renter friendly. I'm giving you ideas that are genuinely realistically renter friendly that you can really do, especially if you can't like fully paint or wallpaper. They're also pretty low effort if you're like low key lazy or not a crazy DIYer who's gonna like fake build a wall. And lastly, these ideas are pretty affordable. Everything I'm suggesting here is something that is like fairly low cost, something you can thrift, you can source secondhand on Facebook Marketplace, you can hack from Ikea, or you can potentially adapt with something you already have. And these ideas can also be helpful if you have a small space or an awkward layout or any of the realistic problems you face if you're... Thank you so much. This is Baguette, she is my co-host. Hi. As I was saying, some of these are ideas that can adapt if you have a small space or an awkward layout or are facing any of the like realistic challenges that come from renting a real apartment or a small home. Now, before we start, I do wanna say one thing. Bye. We all know that Pinterest and social media is a lie because these homes look amazingly styled, but I also wanna point out, oftentimes the photos you're looking at look amazing because if you look at it, the room itself actually has a very high ceiling or like amazing architectural detail. And sometimes when you try to translate those ideas to your regular apartment, it doesn't work. And thank you. I don't want us all living in collective delusion, so I have done my best today to source photos from rooms that have like normal ceilings. Hopefully this helps you kind of like envision ideas that might look good in your space if you, like me, live in a white, beige, or God forbid, gray box. So if you are ready to turn your dingy apartment into your dream decor paradise, <gasps> let's go. Okay, tip number one, <gasps> curtains. If you live in an apartment, which has a wall color that you hate, or a weird layout, or really echoey sound problems, curtains can change your life. You can obviously use them as a divider to like separate an office or a kitchen or a bedroom. You can use them to create fake walls. You can block something that's ugly. You can kind of create a moment to draw the eye to. If you want to be wild, you can also use them in lieu of paint to change the color of a room. Also doing a full wall of curtains, like floor to ceiling, it can make the room feel taller. It can also mask weird things like an asymmetrical window or some like unused vent or something that's kind of just an eyesore, it can be really nice to kind of set a clean backdrop. You can also use them as a full wall like headboard. That can kind of give it a like, kind of like luxe boutique feel. I did this in an old apartment. I couldn't paint or wallpaper. So I just actually used king size bed sheets to create a whole wall behind me that was like a blue wallpaper pattern. That is another tip too. I love places like Ikea. I love velvet curtains, but extra large king size bed sheets can be a super budget affordable hack. You can also use curtains to like sass up doorways, whether that's like a hallway you're passing through or a closet. It kind of makes it feel like a little bit more of a moment when you like look at it and when you step into it. I love them because they bring a lot of softness and texture. They're great for adding pattern. And if you have an apartment where you need some noise reduction, heavy velvet curtains are gonna be your best friend to like absorb the noise. And pro tip, when you're doing curtains anywhere, the rule of thumb is to double the size to get that nice, rich, luxurious like fold. So basically if you're covering eight feet of wall, you wanna get 16 feet of curtains. All right, number two. Mirrors. Mirrors are a great way to move light around the space, especially if you have a darker space. Of course, we all love a really large glamorous mirror. Lean it against the wall, put it on the wall. I did a whole epic gallery wall of only gold mirrors, but I'm gonna take it a step further and suggest that you mirror an entire wall. This is a great hack for small spaces where you wanna make it feel bigger or spaces where maybe you have a, like a weird nook or something that's kind of its own thing and you just don't know what to do with it. I am a huge fan of Ikea's mirror tiles. These are 12 by 12. I'll link below for you. You can use command strips to put them on the wall and it is so dope to mirror an entire wall a small hallway, a small closet. It'll double the size of the room, give you more light, and it can be such a fun, like glamorous vibe. 
And I know this because I was walking around Ikea recently with a friend and in the display room, they had mirrored this really small nook that was almost like a tiny walk-in closet. And it turned it into like an instant infinity room. And it was so fun. You can also use these mirrors as like fake backsplash behind like a little mini wet bar. You could like mirror the back of a bookcase or you can even put them onto closet doors. You can also do a DIY to like fake antique them. It's very unexpected, it's very dramatic and it can make a really, really cool difference. Numero three. Banquette seating. Banquette seating is so overlooked as an option for apartment kitchens. Banquettes are so fun. They can feel really fun and funky and eclectic. They can feel retro. They can feel like a chic Parisian cafe, or it can make something feel like a cozy grandma's nook. Now you can get actual banquette seating on secondhand apps. You'd actually be surprised how often they pop up from like local businesses, but you can also easily fake a banquette with a small love seat or a bench and pillows. If you have a small nook, you can do like L-shaped seating, or you could even do banquette seating across like a full wall in your living room. Again, kind of faking it with benches and pillows. But again, it's a super fun idea in like the small corner of a kitchen, if you have a dining room, or if you need to make the corner of a living room your dining nook. And again, if you have a weird like funky nook or like some weird kind of like inset portion of your wall, you could like squeeze a banquette in there. It could also be like a little reading nook or something. And if you need to maximize your space, you can also get like storage benches and use those as your banquette. You can do fun colors, fun patterns. You can make it like its own statement piece and really draw the eye to that area. And if you get a small love seat or a small bench, it can also move out into other areas of the house if you like need additional seating to entertain. So like I always say, if you want to go big, go banquette. Number four, a fireplace. If you are not blessed to have a chic modern fireplace or an adorable, charming vintage fireplace, you don't have to live life without a fireplace. As a renter, my dream was always to have an adorable, beautiful, charming fireplace in my apartment, but apartments with fireplaces are much more expensive. And then one day I realized I can just fake one. You can buy faux fireplaces. They actually plug into the wall and are actually heat or electric or you can just buy the little fake fireplace surround and style what's inside of it. You can build one or you can hack one. One of the coolest hacks I've seen is taking the top half of a thrifted hutch or dresser and using that as a faux mantle. You can paint it as you want, you can customize it as you want because you can style it in a lot of cool ways. You can use battery operated candles, you can add a fake log, you can add books, you can style it with plants or even disco balls. And you can make it look more realistic if you add fireplace accoutrement, like a beautiful old school fireplace fan screen. And best of all, you can put it anywhere you want in your house. You can even turn like a weird corner bookcase unit into like a fake little fireplace in the corner. I have a weird built-in thing in my living room and one day I decided, screw it, I'm gonna fake a fireplace here. So with $100 worth of foam and faux brick, I made the fireplace of my dreams and just filled it with battery operated candles. I will link that episode below as well. So I'm telling you, please light up your life with a fake fireplace. And speaking of lighting, let's get into it. There's always a lot of talk in the renter friendly world about lighting and switching out lighting. You can totally get your own custom light fixtures. You can swap them out. But if you don't wanna pay for an electrician or that just feels like too much drama and trouble, here are some ways you can get both tactical and mood lighting in your house. This is especially helpful if you live in an apartment that has no overhead lighting, like a lot of older apartments don't. First, you can buy converter kits for boob lights. They now sell like drum light converter kits where you just take the case off and you just like screw the other one in. They're very easy and like foolproof to do. Or you can thrift a little bit larger lampshade and you can customize that. Here's an example from Urban Outfitters that you could really easily do by painting it. You can paint it, you could cover it in fabric, or you can add fun details. You can also easily cover up a boob light by getting a really large paper lampshade and cutting around and like hooking that into the ceiling. I did that in a living room makeover, also linked below. And the big thing to remember with lighting is just always that you wanna use a low heat LED and you wanna have a fair amount of space between that bulb and whatever object is covering it. In another episode I did, linked down below, I thrifted lampshades and we covered them in fringe and gold banding to make like a really dramatic fake chandelier. You can like attach those to the ceiling with hooks or you can get a plug-in pendant and swag it anywhere you want. Speaking of plug-in pendants, there are a lot of things you can turn into a pendant that you wouldn't realize. One of my favorites that I did in my own home office is turning a basket upside down, cutting a little hole in it, and turning that into a hanging pendant. This is a super awesome idea. Here's an example of people doing that with an Ikea basket. You could do it with like a bowl upside down if you cut a hole in it. So that's helpful for kind of overhead tactical lighting or kind of like designery lighting. For more mood lighting or kind of more lighting at different levels in your house, 
sconces. You can put a sconce anywhere, even one little one on a wall, and it really warms the space up. You can buy plug-in renter-friendly sconces, or you can adapt almost anything into a sconce with a remote controlled bulb or little puck light. You could do a battery operated candelabra. I'm a big fan of doing very symmetrical sconces. So think of sconces on either side of your fake fireplace, on either side of your bed, on either side of your sofa, or pop a few down your hallway. You can thrift or DIY almost anything into a sconce. I like little kind of like shelf like bookends, flip them backwards, pop them on the wall, and then pop like a battery operated pillar candle in them. All of your lighting can be on remotes. You can even sometimes change the colors. It's the best thing ever for renters. And of course, for all lighting, you can actually source any actual lighting piece, whether it works or not. So if you happen to find something amazing online or at the thrift store, by all means, get it. Basically, don't let a lack of hard wiring make your life harder. Okay, next up, screens. I've talked about this in other episodes. Screens feel like a kind of old timey thing that has been largely forgotten, but they're so incredible and versatile, especially in small spaces. Similar to curtains, they can help you wall off a space and create more division, and they can be put away to make more space if you need it. But if you're not needing them for division, they can also be used to sass up your home in very unexpected and cool ways. Put one by your doorway, it can like fake a hallway entrance when you walk in. They can work as wall decor. They are a great option if you can't wallpaper, but you want a really bold piece. And using a screen as like large art is a great solution if you kind of have like gallery wall fatigue. I swear, I'm not anti-gallery wall. I'm just giving you guys other options. You can use them as headboards. You can put them behind a sofa as wall art. You can even hang art on them. You can put them behind a banquette. Wouldn't that be cool? They're also like the greatest tool when you have that weird corner or something that feels empty and you don't know what to do with it. Throw a screen there, put a little plant stand in front of it, throw a chair there, and you've created like an instant moment for your eyes. You can even get screen dividers that have built-in shelving to use as like a plant wall. Again, you can make them, you could upholster them, you can add your own custom wallpaper to them. Oh, and there are also mirrored screens, which can do double duty to open up a space or give you a little dressing room moment. You can even get those Ikea mirror tiles and add them to a screen. You're welcome. My whole decorating universe is very intertwined, but yeah. Screens can be your best friend. Now let's switch gears and talk about something small but delightfully wonderful. Washi tape. Washi tape is a great, inexpensive, really creative tool for renters. When you can't wallpaper or paint, but you want some fun sass around your house, oh baby, pick up your washi tape. You can fake wallpaper designs with washi tape. I did a whole video on this, also linked below. Or you can use it to add really unique designs to your walls. For example, you can use it for fake paneling, which is the coolest, laziest way to get a paneling effect. You can use it to create fake art frames for a cool gallery wall. This is especially cool in a kid's room where you could kind of create an evolving gallery wall of art. As they do new paintings and drawings, you can just stick it on the wall. You can also add cool designs to your doors to add a little bit extra interest. One trend I really like is adding a pop of color to the inside of your door. It's kind of like cool and sneaky and like your landlord wouldn't notice it, but you can totally use colored washi tape to line the insides of your doors or even do cool patterns like a striped pattern all the way down. It's so fun, it's so subtle, and it's good for people who are like scared to go full colorful maximalist and just want like a little secret moment. Of course, you can also use it to add designs to your furniture. I used it to add funky designs to my vanity because I wasn't totally sure if I wanted to paint it. But best of all, washi tape is just so cheap and inexpensive and so versatile because they have so many different colors. You can get regular colors, you can get neon, you can even get like the metallic silver and gold. So it is just a very fun and cheap way to get creative and play. Now, let's talk about one of the hardest parts of renting, and that can be cabinets. Let's be real, sometimes cabinets can ruin lives. Bad kitchen cabinets, bad bathroom cabinets, they can be really dated or they can be a finish or color that you're just like not down with but you can hack them in some sneaky ways. Like I just said, you can use washi tape to do cool designs, or you can do what I've done in multiple places, which is cover them with contact paper. You can use contact paper to change your cabinets to a different color or even a different texture. You can easily use fake wood grain to make boring white cabinets look wood. Now, a caveat to this. You cannot put contact paper on painted wood cabinets. If they already have a paint on them, it's gonna peel off the paint. If you have laminate or melamine or like potentially even like varnished wood cabinets, contact paper is great. You can put it on and when you wanna take it off, you can use a hair dryer to heat it up as you remove it. And generally the adhesive comes right off super easy. I did this in my best friend's kitchen. I did this in my own bathroom. It's super low cost, very budget friendly. Now, if you do have wood painted cabinets and you're like, but I wanna change it, 
Here is a super sneaky, tricky hack you can do. And this actually applies to wallpaper too. You can get liquid starch and fabric and you could cover your cabinets that way. This is an old army wife trick that they used to use because they would move from place to place and they needed an easy way to put up fake wallpaper and take it down. You basically soak the fabric in starch, you can paste it on and just let it dry. And it peels off so easy. I will link some tutorials for that below as well. Now, if you're too scared or intimidated to do any of that, Here's another thing you can do. If your cabinets are really ugly or super eyesore, you can just remove the cabinet doors and give it a totally different look. This can help you like open up your kitchen space. It can let you show off really cute plates and cups. And depending on what the interior is like, you can put in little contact paper or wallpaper kind of like backing to add a little fun color or print. You can also take the doors off of closets and things like that to make a little bit more of an open space or like a fun nook. This is especially helpful if you wanna turn like a small hallway closet into a mini office nook or other space like that. And obviously make sure you save the hardware and then you can put it back on when you move out. Now, let's talk about another thing that can be a big eyesore and that is something that a lot of people overlook. And that is your fridge. People have a lot of opinions about fridges. Some people think white fridges look cheap. Some people prefer stainless steel. Some people really want like a vintage Smeg looking appliance. Whatever it is, here's what I know about your fridge. If it's an eyesore, if it sticks out in a weird way, or if it's just not that fun, Make it fun and cover it in contact paper. They actually make like peel and stick vinyl for fridge coverings. You can add a fun pattern. You could get fake stainless steel. You could get fake wood. You could even like panel one side of it if it like sticks out in a sight line if you're looking into your kitchen. Or you can fake your dream cute 1950s turquoise colored fridge. Another reason I love to change the color of a fridge is because a lot of people when they buy certain appliances will tend to kind of have a signature color right? So you might have like a turquoise teapot and a turquoise mixer. You can buy so many colors of contact paper and you can turn your fridge like your signature kitchen color. On that note, you can even swap the hardware on your fridge. Like you can get a nice gold pull instead of like the cheap white plastic. I am currently living with a cheap white plastic fridge handle door. It's fine. I'm just saying that that is an option if you want to go nuts. And lastly, let's talk about what is sometimes the toughest room in an apartment, which is the bathroom. Sometimes you're really limited in what you can do to sass up a bathroom. And bathrooms are also notorious for like bad cabinets, bad lighting, bad flooring. And especially if it's a smaller space, if you can't paint, it can feel very limited. So these are my simple suggestions to sass up a bathroom. Number one, you can always swap the hardware on your cabinets. The same goes for your kitchen, but sometimes that's just too little of a change to make a difference for you. So this is what I say. My number one tip is just to lean hard into textiles. Cover up an ugly floor with a really fun, colorful rug. I'm not talking about a bath mat that's an accent. I'm talking do a full washable runner rug in your bathroom. You can also get like a bold graphic black and white that basically mirrors floor tiles. Now, some people get very dramatic about rugs in the bathroom, but there are so many like washable rug versions now, it's not that big a deal. And you can also get a different bath mat to lay over that rug. So you're not just walking around getting everything wet all the time. And obviously you can really lean into your towels, right? You can do bold colors, you can do fun patterns. Now, one of the best ways to go really bold and really extra and really dramatic is with your shower curtain. I am not talking college dorm shower curtain. I'm not even talking like fun, colorful shower curtain. I'm talking floor to ceiling, double drapes. If you go floor to ceiling, it is so glam. It is so dramatic. Obviously you want to have an interior shower curtain liner, but for the drapes, you can even install like double curtain ties to kind of keep them like glamorously open. And it is so extra and so unexpected. Everyone who comes to your apartment will be shocked. And if you have space, one of the other things that is extra luxurious and extra glamorous is to add a bath stool. I am partial to a colorful or very patternful like ceramic drum bath stool. You could add a basket of beautiful like bath products to it or add a plant to it. I'm telling you guys, even if you have a dingy, tiny, no window bathroom, Add faux plants around and it will instantly make it feel better. You can also, of course, add beautiful baskets to hold bath products or toilet paper or little hand towels. But I'm telling you, you do those drapes, you do a bath stool, you do a plant, and you're gonna feel like you're in a glamorous palazzo in the Mediterranean. I don't know about you, but I have inspired myself to make over my apartment again. So if you guys found this helpful, if you like this style of video, let me know below. If you guys have good renter friendly tips or hacks, please comment as well. If you guys like DIYs, if you like decorating, if you like fun inspiration, sign up for my monthly newsletter below. I send out a monthly roundup of inspiration, tips, tricks, all those fun things. And if you guys use any of these tips to make over your apartment, I would love to see it. I love to see your guys' nudes, AKA 
pictures of room makeovers. So until next time, I wish you good luck with your DIYs, good luck with your decor, and I wish you all to get your rental deposits back.